Hello and welcome to my podcast. My name is Peter Doherty. I'm a Catholic priest and a psychologist who integrates both psychology and scripture studies to further understand the Gospels and seek out practical and deeper focused teachings. Today we are focusing on Matthew 25 verse 1 to 13. This Gospel will be read in Catholic churches on November 12, 2023. If this is your first time listening to my podcast, welcome. And I invite you to check out the earlier editions, and especially the first one, where I outline the direction and the purpose of this podcast. Today's Gospel is another parable about the Kingdom of Heaven. I'm not sure exactly how this parable is about the Kingdom of Heaven, but we do gain insights about Jesus and what it means to be his follower, a Christian. This tells the story of ten bridesmaids. Five were ready to welcome the groom with oil in their lamps, while the other five were not ready. When the bridegroom finally arrives, the five foolish bridesmaids ask the wise ones for help. They are told to go and buy some oil for themselves. Good luck in finding an all-night lamp oil stand somewhere. However, when they come back, they learn they are not admitted to the wedding feast. The Gospel ends with the warning to stay awake and be prepared, as you do not know the day or the hour. This Gospel reminds me of the, the Boy Scout motto, Be Prepared. I am concerned, though, because it appears we are left with the image of a God looking for opportunities to catch us unprepared. Kind of a gotcha. I think there may be more to this story. The warning to stay awake is interesting. The bridesmaids missed the bridegroom because they were not prepared, not because they had fallen asleep. Remember, the wise bridesmaids had also fallen asleep. It seems Jesus is not talking about avoiding sleep, but to be alert, conscious of what's going on around you, and there is the strong message to take personal responsibility for your choices. The last part of the Gospel ends on a chilling note where the Lord says, I do not know you. This ending adds a whole new layer of interpretation. Matthew has done this before. Remember the story of the king who planned a wedding feast for his son and the guests uh, wouldn't come, so he has to drag them in from everywhere. But the last line of the, of the story is he kicks someone out because they were not dressed properly. That last part really shifted our interpretation of the parable. The last part in today's Gospel, where the Lord says, I do not know you, raises some interesting points. Much of our relationship with God is about what God can do for us. You hear about Jesus being described as Savior, Teacher, Wonder Counselor. And while there's nothing wrong with this, and Jesus is all that, it does seem sort of one-sided and focused solely on ourselves. Yet, for many Christians, this is their experience of God. I am surprised at the number of Christians who are satisfied with such a superficial experience of God in their lives. Or perhaps they have given up believing that they could have a dynamic and meaningful relationship with their God. I am not suggesting there is something wrong with how one lives their faith, only that it could be so much more. I think God wants to be more than a Savior and invites us all into a closer relationship. I'm wondering how much of our life we are on automatic pilot. We go through the motions of what is expected of us without giving much thought. How often do we reflect on our life choices and directions we are taking? I'm thinking of Socrates, who famously said, the unexamined life is not worth living. Sounds a bit harsh, but I'm wondering if the call to be awake is to be is central part of this gospel. Personal reflection ought to be part of our relationship with God. I'm not talking about navel-gazing, but rather reflecting on how we have included prayer in our life, made choices in our life that lead to spiritual growth and a focus on God. Just for a moment, let's put our reflection on the back burner. and Let me ask you, who is God for you? Do you see God as a benevolent being, one who will change the laws of nature so that we don't have to experience the consequences of our own choices? Or simply a God that we call on when we need help? Or do you see God as an old grandfather, nice to have around, 
but not very relevant for your life. Do you see God as a vengeful God who punishes infractions and demands the death of his son as a blood sacrifice to atone for our sins? Do you see God as a supreme being demanding that we love him and follow his seemingly arbitrary teachings? Otherwise, we may be sent to the fires of hell. Are we faithful to the teachings of the church so that we can be saved? If we do what we are told, we'll get our everlasting reward in heaven. Not a bad deal if you look on it in the broad sense. These choices may seem harsh, but I urge you to take a look at your relationship with God and ask yourself, do any of the above suggestions resonate with your experience of God? I'm not trying to criticize, but rather for you to see how your relationship with God is not complete or maybe even skewed and thus causing problems in the development of a healthy and meaningful relationship with God. I wonder that we, like the foolish bridesmaids, have limited our relationship with God and then wonder why God seems so emotionally distant. The good news is we can learn more about our God if we want. We have the scriptures. And I recommend you start reading the Gospels if you haven't already. There are several books and online resources. I'm thinking of Father Richard Rohr, who has published many books and has daily reflections sent directly to, your, to one's computer. Another example is the late Bishop Spong, former Episcopalian Bishop of Newark, who has many books and even YouTube videos providing powerful insights on the scriptures. This is certainly not an exhaustive list, but I will have more suggestions for you in future podcasts. I urge you to look at your prayer life. I plan to release a podcast on prayer in the next couple of months because prayer is critical to the development of our faith. I urge you to pray to see the workings of the Spirit in your life. I urge you to pray for the ears of faith, to hear the voice of God, as it is easily drowned out by the noises of our modern day life. Pray that you can hear the urgings of the Holy Spirit. I urge, urge you to pray for a heart of flesh rather than a heart of stone. Having compassion for the needs of others will build your faith. I urge you to pray for the eyes of faith, to see the impact of the Spirit in your life and others. Maybe it's a lack of faith that holds us back. Maybe wondering what changes in our life would happen if we had more faith. There is definitely a call to action in this gospel. What does the gospel mean to you and to each of us personally? Can we develop a curiosity about our God? I urge you to avoid labels that sound right when you first hear them, but you'd be challenged to explain what they mean to you. It's okay to struggle with what a relationship with God mean, will mean to you, in fairness, I suspect it's not easy to speak of any relationship we have that does justice to that relationship. But I hope this gospel inspires us into a deeper relationship with God and actively seek out God, knowing that God is so close. Thank you for listening. If this is your first time, as I've mentioned, first time listening to my podcast and you're interested in hearing more, I urge you to listen to my first podcast where I outline my, outline my approach. Also, you can, be, you can reach me by email at peter.doherty, O-M-I, at gmail.com. Again, that's peter.doherty, O-M-I, at gmail.com. If you have any questions, concerns, or suggestions on how I can make this podcast more effective, please let me know. I appreciate your feedback. Take care and God bless.